In this video, I'll show you how to create an AI agent that can query databases effectively. The agent can query everything from single tables and views to more complex database schemas. So I'm going a lot deeper than most other tutorials on this topic. I'll be demonstrating using a Postgres database on Superbase, but the concepts here will apply to lots of other databases such as SQL Server or MySQL. I'll also be covering a vital tip, which is how to secure your agent against SQL injection attacks. Let's start with a quick demo. And by the way, I will be going through the entire process for this, but I will be sharing the blueprints with our community linked in the description. And I'll also be sharing the script so you can load in this entire test database at the click of a button. I have a database here that's pretty simple, but it's complex enough to explain the concepts. Here we have a bunch of tables like customers, orders, and products, and they're normalized to some degree. They have relationships between each other via IDs, and that helps to remove redundancies. Now that you have a bird's eye view of the schema, we can go into the table editor, and then you can see the data for each of those individual tables. Let's start from here, and I'll explain how to cover bigger databases later in this video. Okay, let's start by asking it to give me the total amount spent per customer with total dollar amounts and number of orders. As it's doing this, it's called this tool to get the tables, schemas, and foreign keys available within the database. And then the AI model has constructed an SQL query, and then that's executed directly against the database. If we look at the response from the agent, we see here's the total amount spent and order counts per customer. This type of computation is usually something that standard RAG agents would fail miserably at. So let's have a little look at what kind of query was executed against that. So if we dig into that, so we see here that the AI agent has created a reasonably complex query that's joining the data from these tables together. I've just copied this into Notepad++ and I'm just gonna remove these new line characters that are showing up within N8N. And then within this SQL editor in Superbase, I can run that query directly and see exactly what's happening. So we see here that it is joining these tables together based on these keys and grouping this data correctly. And by the way, I did not hard code any information about this schema directly into this system prompt. That all came from this tool. So if I click into that, this was called first before the AI created the SQL query. When I click into this, we see this tool shows each of the tables and their data types and the relationships with other fields from other tables. I did this by creating a database view, which lists out all the tables and all the information as you see it here. Then from within this agent, this is calling this tool, but this tool is calling a workflow and that workflow is the one further down here. And that's just simply a Postgres select node against that view. So it's gonna return all of these rows and then I'm aggregating all of those and then that's what is returned up here. You can tweak and edit and limit this view even further. This approach is known as natural language query. The first step is to always make sure that your agent has the correct context of schema, relationships, and whatever else necessary in order to properly construct those queries. There are multiple different approaches for that, and I'll be going through a few of those in this video. Then when you wanna query that data, we get to the inference stage, where you ask the agent a question, your question will go straight to the AI agent that will get context of your database either hard-coded in your system prompt or through an available tool like I covered previously. From there, the agent can create a complex SQL query that can be run directly against the database for accurate, lightning-fast results. The database responds with the data to the agent and the agent decides how to handle that response back to the user. This is extremely different to conventional RAG that we cover a lot on this channel. In conventional RAG, when a user asks a question, that question gets converted into embeddings and then is compared against what's in the vector database for a semantic search. The result is a bunch of related chunks that get sent back to the LLM. This type of RAG just generally does not work for databases because if you try to store this relational data in a vector database instead, if you ask the agent a question, it will go to the vector store and then just return a bunch of random chunks out of context and you're not going to get proper calculation or grouping, and the AI could easily hallucinate answers based on just those few chunks that got out of context. Later on, I'll be explaining how you can build in this NLQ database querying functionality into an agentic RAG system. So the agent will have the best of both worlds. It will be able to query the vector database whenever it needs semantic results, but be able to call the relational database if it needs precise quantitative results based on structured data. You could also combine this with a graph rag system like Daniel covered in our recent video, linked below. So let's take a step back and see how this agent is built. For this, I've added in a standard N8N AI agent and I've hooked up an OpenAI chat model. Really importantly, I've selected a reasoning model. So I've selected this chain of thought O4 mini model and this massively outperformed the likes of GPT-40 because it was able to construct far more sophisticated queries, which was able to join multiple tables together. When I was using models like GPT-40, a lot of the times it would only try to select data from one single table. O4 Mini is a good option and it's also cheap to use. 
From there, I have a Postgres chat memory node. You don't necessarily need to use it for this. You could just use a simple memory because this is just for short-term memory so that the agent remembers the last few messages. But in this case, I'm gonna connect it to that. By the way, if you don't have a Postgres credential set up, then within your Superbase instance, go to connect and select transaction pooler here and go to view parameters. So you can easily use that to get up and running with your queries. But keep in mind that that user is a super user within Postgres and I would be very, very hesitant to push that to production because it could leave your database vulnerable to SQL injection attacks via prompt injection. I'll be explaining how to create a more restricted user within your Postgres database later on in the video. And then this tool to get tables, schemas and foreign keys. So in this case, it calls the other workflow that's below here which is going to get the data from that view that we talked about earlier. Before we go any further, let's go into the setup for this AI agent and look at the system prompt in particular. I'll explain some parts of this system prompt. You are an enterprise assistant helping users access information. You are tasked with answering a question using the information within the database. Before querying the database, you must call the get tables, schemas, columns, and foreign keys tool to identify the most relevant tables and fields. So that's key. So if you want to rely on this view, then it's really important to specify that it needs to call that tool. By the way, if your database structure is pretty stable and doesn't have many updates, then what you could do is just copy and paste out the mappings from the result of this tool and delete the tool and then hard code it directly into the system prompt. That will just speed things up and reduce the amount of queries that the agent will need. But for the moment, we'll go with this approach. After that, I'll explain how to do that optimization. So I've noted that the tool above will include any foreign key references. You can use these to construct join statements as necessary to reduce the number of SQL commands. You must make sure to follow correct foreign key relationships to retrieve accurate results. Now I added this in because in some cases, the agent was creating separate select statements. Then it was trying to use the intelligence of the AI to summarize and group that data together. But we really do not want that because SQL is the tool for this. The AI should just be relaying the results back to the user. This is a pretty important section. When applying where clauses, you should run select distinct queries on the relevant fields first to understand the valid options. This applies even if the user provides a specific value. You must verify that the value exists in the data before using it. To give an example of this, let's say you're asking your agent to only return orders in a certain category. The agent needs to have context of what the actual values are within your database for those categories, because it will need to pass in specific values into the WHERE clause. And if the wording or spelling is slightly off, then it could easily return zero results. If your agent does not have this feature where it's able to understand the data that's in the database, then it can be really poor at filtering data. And then going on further, your goal is to provide an accurate answer based on this information only. Your aim is to construct a single SQL query to join all of the relevant tables for the required data unless you require SQL queries to get distinct values. Again, I'm trying to make sure that the AI does not try to use its own intelligence to go and join data together. At the very end, if you cannot answer the question using the provided information, or if no information is returned from the vector store, say, sorry, I don't know. Oh, I see there's an issue there. That should be returned from the database. So as you see, when our question went to the AI agent, it called this get tables, schemas, and foreign keys tool. And as mentioned earlier, it calls this other workflow, which is just this workflow down here. Within this node, it's gonna accept all incoming data. And then from there, we have this node to get tables, schemes, and foreign keys. That's just a Postgres node. I've added this in the schema public, and I have a view created called get list of tables and columns. So let's go into our Superbase database, and we see we have this get list of tables and columns. We have table name, we have the column names, as well as our data types. The data types are really important, so the agent knows how to query. And then we also have these foreign key references. I see foreign is actually spelled incorrectly here, but the AI agent still figures it out. I will update that and let's look at how this is generated. This view is created using SQL code, which looks complicated, but ChatGPT is very good at creating it. So I asked ChatGPT to create a view, which included the schema, the names, and the data types of all of the tables in the database. Creating that kind of view would usually result in a pretty small amount of code for that query, but I also wanted these foreign key references here so that the AI would be able to properly join data between tables. So when I asked ChatGPT to generate this, then it resulted in a longer query. When you have code for that, you can copy this straight into the SQL editor and press run. When you do that and go into the table editor, then you will see that view on the left-hand side. Then you can call that view from N8N like you could also call a standard table. So I selected it from that list there. Then from there, I'm using aggregate. So even if we get lots of different rows back from the database, like we would in this case, then it's gonna aggregate all of those into one data item. Then we have this edit fields node, and then I've just called this field mappings, and I've just mapped in JSON.data, which is the data that we get from the previous node here. 
Once the agent has context of the database, then it can construct an SQL query. And from there, it calls this node. And we have this from AI expression, and the agent will automatically populate the SQL query into this. So let's ask it another question. Show me all products from the clothes category. You see here it says, I don't see a category named clothes in the data. The closest match is clothing. So if I look at that, we see that I was actually incorrect in my initial question. In this case, I'm going to say yes, and then the AI agent should then query the correct data. But you could also update the system prompt within the AI agent to give it license to be able to make assumptions based on things like this. In that case, it can work in an agentic rag fashion where it executes two separate queries before returning the data to you. In this case, I've just said yes, and then it should then now apply that correct clause within the where clause when it's constructing that SQL query. Okay, there we go. It returned with two products, its ID, name, and price. Then when I go into the SQL query, you see it just had this simple select query and it added in this correct where clause at the end. And again, most SQL agents would not have been able to handle this use case unless you hard coded every single distinct value within the system prompt or where you know the exact distinct name as it appears in the database. So as another optimization, if you're very happy that the data that you're getting back from this tables and schemas and foreign keys tool is pretty static and does not change very often, then you can just take all this data like so and then hard code it directly into the system prompt up here. So then you can delete this tool or just disconnect it at least. So I have a simplified version of this AI agent here and I've removed this other get tables and schemas tool. When I go into the agent, if I expand out the system prompt at the very end, I've just dumped in the list of tables, schemas, and foreign keys to the very end of it. This then results in faster retrieval. And if you were to update the table schemas later on or add a column or add in foreign keys or whatever you want, then you could just go back to this original one, run that again, and then update the system prompt here. So this approach can handle some layers of normalization as you see within this kind of database structure and databases that are more complicated than this. But there is a limit to how far these AI agents can go when constructing these complex queries that can join multiple tables together. So if the approach I've gone through so far is unreliable or inconsistent with your data and your data structures, then you can alternatively create a view in your database. A view effectively acts as a stored query. So instead of having all of these normalized tables together, then we flatten all of these into one single view, which will simplify things a lot we already previously used one in order to store schema information in the database, but you could also just create a separate view like we have here, which is a flattened version where we've combined lots of data from different tables into one view that we can then query quite easily from within an N8N -N agent. Instead of customer details only being stored in one place, if we go to this full order details view, we see that the customer name is denormalized. It's duplicated a lot and there is redundancy but it makes it a lot easier to query. For each of your tables, you can click on this icon here and then select copy table schema. When you do that, then that should be copied to the clipboard. Then you can copy this in the ChatGPT along with all of the other tables that you want to include within your view. So just as a quick example, I asked it to create a view that combines data from all these tables in a meaningful way. Then I just pasted a bunch of these create table statements in and the result of that was a view that we see here. From there, we copy this code into the SQL editor over there. Then we press run. And when that is done, then we see the full order details view here. And then we can then query that directly from within the N8N AI agent. So for here, I have a separate AI agent created for this. Within this system prompt, I'm gonna expand this out and scroll down to the very end. Instead of the original table schema, we want to define the structure of the current view. So within ChatGPT, it's already created the code to create the view. Now I'm just asking a follow-up question to give me all the columns and data types and brackets in a comma separated list. From there, I press enter and here we go. Yeah, it looks good. We can copy that out and then paste that into the table schema section here. Also, we need to make sure we provide the table name. So the table name is full order details. And from there, we should have what we need in order to be able to query that view. Now I'm gonna ask this agent the same question that I asked one of the previous versions, and that is to give me the total amount spent per customer with total dollar amounts and number of orders. Okay, and we get a response. We have the total number of orders and total amount spent. And again, it's the same response that we got from the previous version. It's just that now we're using a view instead of joining all those tables together. The idea of creating a view like this can work very well for complex databases. And it also means that you could potentially use a cheaper model because the queries will be far less complex. So creating a view is a really good approach to consider. A final option I'll give is to be far more deterministic about the type of data that you're gonna get back 
And that is where you would hard code in a prepared query in here. So for example, you could duplicate this node a few times, call them different things, then you could have a particular stored query for every single one of these. Let's take an example of this. In this case, I have two tools set up. Instead of just giving it access to create arbitrary queries, we have a get orders tool and a get product list tool. If I go into this get product list, we see that I've created a very specific SQL query. And in this case, the AI agent is not even passing any particular dynamic values to this. So it's always going to return with the results of this query based on what's in the database. I then have a separate tool set up called get orders. And in this case, it's just a duplicated Postgres execute SQL node. In the query, I have select all from full order details, which is the view, and where order status equals dollar sign one. This dollar sign one is a dynamic query parameter. So the AI agent can decide what to put in. So when you're adding this in for the first time, go to add option, and then go to query parameters and then press this button over here to let the AI dynamically populate that. When we go into the system prompt, I'll expand this out. And this is a lot simpler than the previous versions of these workflows that I've explained in this video. The first three parts of this are very simple. And then I've just provided with the list of tools, get orders, and then I provided the valid values within the database for those orders. So we have the get orders tool, query parameter should be one of the following. So when the AI agent is calling this tool, it should pass one of these values. And then that should be passed into this dollar sign one section here. And then at the very end of this, we also have the get product list. There are no other query parameters for that. So the AI agent can just call that tool directly. Okay, let's just test this out. I'll ask it to give me a list of pending orders. It's gone to execute that query. And now it's coming back and is processing an answer. So it looks like it did send the correct order status and then we get a response on the right hand side which is looking good and the ai has interpreted that and on the left hand side here we see a result which looks good so we have the pending orders along with a bunch of information about those orders now i'll ask it to give me the current list of products and again this should be a simple one and it should just call the get product list tool and then just relay the information back to the chat. Okay, there we go. We have the products and we have the categories for each of those products. This approach is quite reliable. You could duplicate these tools and be very deterministic about how you are querying your database. And um, so it is very much a valid option, particularly for more complex databases. And if you want to really lock down what kind of access you're giving the agent, but it's definitely not as flexible as the previous approaches. So you can just use whatever approach you want, depending on the context. The performance in these approaches will usually be very, very good. If you have absolutely massive amounts of data in your tables, then you might run into performance issues. In that case, you may need to consider adding indexes to your tables. And that's a really old concept in databases. So there are plenty of guides online for how to do that. So this is all good. The AI agent is able to execute SQL against your database but there could be a major vulnerability here, which is that the AI agent could be coaxed into sending destructive queries to your database, such as dropping your database, dropping tables, or updating data. So when you're working on this, I really would recommend that you create a more restricted user within your Postgres account, not only to stop from prompt injection, but also just in case the AI agent attempts CRUD operations by mistake, which could potentially compromise your database. To create this read-only user within Postgres, you can run an SQL command. And so in this case, we have this create user read-only with password, update the password as necessary. Then we grant permissions to that user depending on what parts of the database we want to give the user access to. I'll be including the read-only user script for the test database within the system blueprints in the community. If you're creating this for your own database, the script will be different and it will vary based on what tables you want to give this read only user access to. There are guides online for how to do this and also ChatGPT is particularly good at being able to generate SQL commands. As mentioned earlier, you can combine the power of database querying with other retrieval methods such as vector databases or even graph databases. I explained this concept a bit in our agentic sheets video where we are querying a relational database like we've done in this video, but also where we have a separate vector database tool where the agent can also retrieve data from that as necessary. Within the system prompt for that, we're saying when answering a question, query the vector store to attempt to retrieve the data if the question relates to general information and so on. But if the question involves tabular data, such as calculating sums, averages, or finding maximum values, the vector store may be unreliable. In that case, start by reviewing the available data sets, identify the ones most likely to contain the answer, and then construct an SQL query to analyze them. So you can use a very similar approach to this if you want to combine this into an agentic RAG system as well. If you want to get access to our state-of-the-art RAG templates, as well as everything we've covered in this video, then make sure to check out the link in the description to our community. Thanks for watching.